The special forces of India refer to those units which are under the direct command of the Indian military and specifically organized, trained, and are equipped to conduct and support special operations. First, Para, Indian Army Special Forces. The unit was created in 1966 by the Indian Army. During the Indo-Pakistani War of 1965, a small ad hoc force comprising volunteers from most infantry units from North India under Maj Meg Singh of the Brigade of the Guards, operated along and behind enemy lines. The performance of this force made the powers that be sit up and take notice of the contribution and necessitated the raising of unconventional forces. Forming the nucleus of the new force from the volunteers of the then disbanded Magdut force, a battalion was raised to be part of the Brigade of Guards, but paratrooping being an integral part of commando tactics. The unit was transferred to the Parachute Regiment. Raised in July 1966, 9th Battalion, the Parachute Regiment, Commando, was the first special operations unit. Second, Marcos Indian Navy Special Forces. This unit was created in 1987 by the Indian Navy. They saw action during Operation Puan in 1988. They were also a part of Operation Cactus in 1988. They have also been deployed in Willer Lake which was a major infiltration point for terrorists. During the 2008 Mumbai attacks, Marcos had participated in the operations along with the National Security Guards. The Marcos, which had a base in Alabag, could have been called in much earlier, but were delayed due to bureaucratic indecision. The Marcos are capable of undertaking operations in all types of terrain, but are specialized in maritime operations. The force has undertaken numerous joint exercises with special forces from around the world. Third, Garrod Commando Force, Indian Air Special Force. It is an Indian Air Force unit which was unveiled in February 2004. It primarily protects Indian Air Force installations from terrorist attacks. Garrod trainees undergo a 72-week probation training course, which is the longest among all the Indian Special Forces. The total duration of training before a trainee can qualify as a fully operational Garrod is around three years. Garrods have diverse responsibilities. Besides base protection force to protect airfields and key assets in hostile environments, some advanced Garrod units are trained like Army Para Commandos and the Naval Marcos to undertake missions deep behind enemy lines. The global cost of India pack nuclear war, the terrible effects of war and its consequences. If India and Pakistan fought a war detonating 100 nuclear warheads, around half of the combined arsenal, each equivalent to a 15 kiloton Hiroshima bomb, more than 21 million people will be directly killed. About half the world's protective ozone layer would be destroyed. And a nuclear winter would cripple the monsoons and agriculture worldwide as the Indian Army reports striking terrorist camps across the border. And a member of Parliament MP of the ruling Bharatiya Janata Party BJP urges a nuclear attack. And the Pakistan Defence Minister threatens to annihilate India in return. These projections, made by researchers from three US universities in 2007, are a reminder of the costs of nuclear war. BJP Rajas Sabha MP Subramanian Swami said, on the 23rd of September, 2016, that if 100 million Indians died in a Pakistani nuclear attack, India's retaliation would wipe out Pakistan. But the real costs would be higher not just in India and Pakistan, 
where the first 21 million people half the death toll of World War II would perish within the first week from blast effects, burns and acute radiation. According to the 2007 study by researchers from Rutgers University, University of Colorado Boulder and University of California Los Angeles, all in the USA, this death toll would be two. 221 times the number of civilians and security forces killed by terrorists in India over nine years. To 2015 according to an India spend analysis of South Asia terrorism portal data. Another 2 billion people worldwide would face risks of severe starvation due to the climatic effects of the nuclear weapon use in the subcontinent. According to this 2013 assessment by the International Physicians for the Prevention of Nuclear War a Global Federation of Physicians. Pakistan has an estimated 110 to 130 nuclear warheads as of 2015 an increase from an estimated 90 to 110 warheads in 2011 according to this report from the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists. A Global Disarmament Advocacy. India is estimated to have 110 to 120 nuclear warheads. Talk of war began after a terrorist attack on an army garrison in the Kashmir town of Uri claimed the lives of 18 Indian soldiers. The Indian army said the attack was carried out by four terrorists from the Jaishi Muhammad army. If Muhammad group based in Pakistan. Pakistan's defense minister Kawahar Masif responded to threats from India by saying. If Pakistan's security is threatened we will not hesitate in using tactical nuclear weapons. Pakistan's nuclear weapons capability has previously deterred India from responding to previous attacks. At the end of the day, India has to ensure that the options it exercises particularly the military ones do not leave it worse off than before in terms of casualties and costs wrote Manoj Mamaj Joshi in the wire. It does not really matter if India has fewer nuclear weapons than Pakistan. India spend reported in April 2015 primarily because of the doctrine of mutually assured destruction or MAD. As it is commonly known see this India spend report for more about India's nuclear weapons program. 66% Pakistan's nuclear weapons on ballistic missiles as many as 66% Pakistani nuclear warheads amounted on 86 land-based ballistic missiles. According to Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists data estimates Pakistan's HATF named after the Sword of Prophet Muhammad series of ballistic missiles has been developed and is still under development keeping India in mind. A major attack by Pakistan's nuclear-tipped medium-range ballistic missiles MRBMs would likely target India's four major metropolitan cities New Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore and Chennai depending on where the missile is fired from. According to Samir Patil, Fellow National Security, Ethnic Conflict and Terrorism at Gateway House, a think tank in Mumbai. The MRBMs would also target the major commands of the Indian Army, Patil told India spend. Nearly half, 40 of Pakistan's ballistic missile warheads could be mated to Gari, named after 12th century Afghan King Shabadim Gari, also known as Muhammad of Gari, MRBMs. The missile has a claimed range of 1. 300 kilometers and can target Delhi, Jaipur, Ahmedabad, Mumbai, Pune, Nagpur, Bhopal and Lucknow. According to this 2006 report on Pakistan's ballistic missile program by the National Institute of Advanced Studies near Bengaluru, Pakistan has an estimated eight warheads which could be mated to the Shaheen Falcon 2. This MRBM has a range of two. 500 kilometers and can target most major Indian cities including Kolkata on the east coast. An estimated 16 warheads could be fired atop the short-range Gaz Navi named after the 11th century Afghan invader Mahmud Ghazni ballistic missile with a range of 270 kilometers to 350 kilometers. It can target Ladiana, Ahmedabad and the outer perimeter of Delhi. Pakistan has an estimated 16 nuclear-tipped Shaheen-1 Falcon short-range ballistic missiles IRBM, having a 750 km range which can reach Ludhiana, Delhi, Jaipur and Ahmedabad. 
Pakistan has an estimated 660 km range NASA missiles which could be mated to nuclear weapons. These tactical nuclear missiles could target advancing battle formations of the Indian Army. According to Patil, these missiles could be what Asif referred to. Pakistan also has eight nuclear-tipped 350 km Babakras missiles with nuclear warheads. An estimated 36 nuclear warheads. Accounting for 28% of Pakistan's total can be delivered using aircraft. US-made F-16 FB aircraft can deliver 24 nuclear bombs while the French-made Mirage 3 V can deliver 12. India's Triad Submarine Missile and aircraft India has deployed 56 Prithvi Earth and Agni fire series of surface-to-surface -surface ballistic missiles which carry 53% of India's 106 estimated warheads, according to the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists. This doesn't take into account the estimated 12 warheads for the K-15 Sagarika submarine-launched ballistic missiles SLBMs, which India has possibly produced for the nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarine INS Arihant. Once commissioned, Arihant would give India a strategic nuclear triad and second strike capability. As this July 2015 India Spend Report notes, given the smaller geographical size of Pakistan, said Patil, India would likely target Islamabad, Walpindi, Lahore and Karachi and the Pakistani Army Armed Corps headquarters at Naoshera. However, he cautioned, the fallout of the nuclear attacks on Lahore and Karachi, for instance, would not just be restricted to the Pakistani territory and depending on the wind directions can affect both Indian and Afghan border territories. Quote, the 250 km range Prithvi SRBM acts as a delivery system for 24 of India's warheads. These are capable of hitting major Pakistani cities, such as Lahore, Sialkot, the capital Islamabad and Rawalpindi, according to this May 2015 India spend analysis. India has 20 nuclear-tipped Agni ISRBM and 8 Agni-2 intermediate-range ballistic missiles. IRBMs with ranges of 700 km and 2000 km, respectively. These are capable of covering almost all Pakistani cities, including Lahore, Islamabad, Rawalpindi, Multan, Peshawar, Karachi, Quetta and Gwadar. Agni-3, IVNV, with the longer ranges might be able to reach all of Pakistan. But it can be safely said that they are directed more towards China. India also possesses an estimated two-ship launched 350 km range Danish SRBM, which could be fitted with nuclear warheads. India's aircraft can deliver an estimated 45% of 106 warheads. The Indian Air Force's Jaguar fighter bombers can deliver about 16 nuclear warheads while the French-built Mirage 2000 fleet can deliver 32. Update. This story has been updated to reflect news of Indian strikes in Pakistan. Seti is a Mumbai-based freelance writer and defense analyst.